ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and jump right into it. This is Mr. Doolin. Thank you for tuning into this. Today, what we're going to take a look at is ionic Lewis dot structures. Um, I've got a couple of statements written here that, that you want to get down. Generally speaking, a bond between a metal and a nonmetal is going to be an ionic bond. A bond between two nonmetals is actually going to be a covalent bond. And so what we do with this is, generally speaking, we initially draw our Lewis dot structures based on this info. Right? And I say initially, and it's important to understand, initially we draw them based on this. And then what we can do with our compounds is we will actually then we will check our electronegativity differences um, to determine the major type of bonding characteristics right and so you want to get that last part down why do we check electronegativity differences and it's actually to determine the major type of bonding characteristics because remember there is no such thing i mean not really most of the time um, there's not really such a thing as a purely covalent or a purely ionic compound. It, it exists somewhere in between, and it has characteristics of, of both. But the electronegativity differences will tell me, you know, we fall into those ranges of 0 0.4, um, 0 0.4 to 1.67, and then greater than 1.67. Like, those tell us the major type of, of bonding characteristics that are going to be present. So also generally, if we're looking at this, let me go ahead and just sketch a periodic table, right? Generally speaking, the reason we can make this assumption most of the time, if we draw a line right here and these are my metals and my non-metals are over here on this side of the staircase, right? Generally speaking, I've got high electronegativity on the non-metal side and I've got generally a low electronegativity on the metal side and so if I have high versus low that's why generally speaking my ionic compounds are composed of metals and non-metals because they have such a large difference in electronegativity and and to be honest with you we could actually predict the type of bonding that would occur just based on general location on the periodic table we've gone through periodic trends before we understand why the trends work the way they, that, that they are all right and we understand that most of my non-metals if we're looking at equivalent periods and even just metals on the left side of the periodic table that they have a higher electronegativity all right okay and so what i've done is i've just erased the page i'm going to continue on here but remember an ionic bond is an ionic it's got a a a, a full positive and a full negative charge there because in an ionic bond the electronegativity differences are great enough that one atom will actually take electrons from from another there's actually a transfer a physical transfer of electrons and so what i want to do is i want to do an example with you i'm going to do lithium and then i'm going to do chlorine c cl so do lithium and then do chlorine and what i'm going to do the dot that i've drawn here for lithium represents a valence electron if you look at lithium on the periodic table it's in the first period or the first group i'm sorry the first group it's an alkali metal they have one valence electron all right for chlorine what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw seven now notice i'm putting one on each side and then i'm going to pair them up right that should be familiar to you based on Hund's rule because essentially what we're doing is we're showing these valent shells right our valence valent shell our s and p's and so we want to make <coughs> excuse me we want to make sure that we we follow our electron configuration rules about pairing up these electrons now what i've got drawn on the page right these structures right here these are called electron dot diagrams and we call them electron dots simply because the dots show valence electrons and so you probably want to understand that the number of dots equals the number of valence electrons for an atom and we can determine that based on what group it's in now with these i know the electronegativity differences are pretty great here i think if off the top of my head chlorine is either three or 3.5 as an electronegativity and i think lithium is one so i'm looking at a difference here of an electronegativity values of somewhere between two and 2.5 so i know it's an ionic compound all right and so what's going to happen 
is that will actually get a transfer of electrons here, right? Chlorine with the high electronegativity will take that electron, and what happens is, is I end up with Li plus and then Cl minus, but I do want to draw in my electrons. And so notice what I'm going to do here is I'm still going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the eighth one to complete chlorine shell came from lithium, all right? And so I would just draw boxes around it like that. And then notice at this particular case, I'm going to write it as LiCl. I can write the formula of this and notice what happened with my formula. The charges balanced out. And so we definitely want to make sure that we understand ionic compounds, the charges balance, right? Our charges balance. This one, I've got one negative and one positive. So I'd end up with one lithium and and one chlorine because that's how it worked to complete those octets, all right? Now notice on this also, something else I want you to see here is that the metal shows the empty valence shell, right? So notice my lithium here, when I redrew this, it showed an empty valence shell. So that's what you want to get down here is that metals show empty valence shells and that should make sense because that they lost their valence electrons when we've been drawing you know when we went over ionic radius and you understand that when they lose those valence electron they lose that outer energy shell right that valence shell and so what we're doing is we're just showing that in the drawing and then the last thing that we need to make sure that we see here is that the non-metal shown with the full valence shell All right, and so it's not anything crazy, and we show the nonmetal because the nonmetal completed its octet in the transfer. All right, and that's why we show that the way that we show it. Okay, so make sure we've got these three things. Number one, when I'm trying to draw an ionic compound Lewis dot structure, I want to make sure that I balance my charges. Right? I want to show the metals with an empty valence shell, and I want to show my nonmetals with a full valence shell. Okay, and so the next one I want to show you is a bond between aluminum and oxygen. Well, I know I look at the periodic table. Aluminum's got one, two, three valence electrons, and oxygen's got, let's put his in a different color, one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. And so now I want to start showing, right, I've got a metal, non-metal. I don't know what my electronegativity difference is, but remember, I'm going to draw these as an ionic compound because of the fact that it's a metal and a non-metal. And so I'll start showing my transfer. I get one transfer there and one transfer there. And then now I start seeing, oh man, I have an oxygen with the complete octet, but aluminum hasn't lost all its electrons. So what we have to do is it's kind of like a puzzle. We have to put another oxygen up there, right? Give it six valence electrons. And then guess where this other electron is actually gonna go? Is it's gonna come down here right and show right there so now i've got one there one there and one there but now what's the problem oxygen has not completed in its octet so what i have to do is i have to come back to aluminum i'm going to draw another aluminum over here and then show this transfer there so now that oxygen has a complete octet but i'm stuck in a position again where aluminum has electrons left over and so what i would do is i would draw another oxygen right one two three four five six and then what you'll see now is that the transfers actually do end up completing the octets i don't have any left over and so the 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 way that i would draw this the final way would be aluminum plus three and again remember my metals are shown with an empty valence shell right no valence electrons and then my oxygen i would show with a full valence shell right and then I would put the negative charge right there. That's going to be a minus two. And then I needed two of these to do it, and I needed three of those to do it. And so that would be my ionic Lewis dot structure. Now, look and see the charges balanced out. I've got a total from aluminum of positive six. I've got a total of oxygen of negative six. My charges balance out. And so when we're doing this, if you didn't like the way I kept having to add elements over here you could actually just look at the charges that they're going to form and you can actually balance them out and know how many that you have to draw to begin with and it should work out right and again i just want to go through this to make sure you understand i'll do the shortcut way i had aluminum plus three and i had oxygen minus two well if i'm looking at that i know the least common multiple here 
common, I'm just going to do multiple, is 6. So I need 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So I know I'm going to end up with Al2. O3, and that's actually called aluminum oxide. That is the compound, right? And so all I've done is I've followed the rules here, right? My metals are shown when I'm drawing the Lewis dot structure of ionic compounds. My metals are shown with an empty valence shell. My nonmetals are shown with a full valence shell, right? Charges have to balance out, and I can actually write formulas based on this information, okay? All right, so hopefully you got that. If you didn't and you got some questions, please come to tutorials. I will see you there. And if I don't see in tutorials, I'll assume you got it. And we'll push on in class. I'll see you then.